Welcome to your new classroom, and I am very much looking forward to being your online teacher whilst you are in years seven and eight at school, although you can start these lessons at any age. My name is Mrs. Red Zebra, and I am delighted to be teaching you mathematics via a range of one to one online tuition. This is the first stage of your home learning without the excessive cost of private tuition. Mum and Dad will be very pleased about this. Via our online classroom at Red Zebra Learning, together we are going to have lots of fun and learn lots of different maths topics so you can progress through your studies and be successful in your exams. You will learn topics such as percentages to fractions, indices and multiples, algebra, transformations and graphs. These lessons are special because they show you lots of pictures, examples and techniques to help you through your studies. I will be very patient and go at your pace. There is lots of visual learning. The lessons go at a steady pace for ease of learning and ensures that you build up your skills rather than jumping in at the deep end. Unlike being at school, you can rewind me as your teacher and go back any time you want. You can't do that in the classroom at school. Hooray! There are many lessons for you to learn and you can start at the beginning of the course or simply choose a topic that you need help in. Whatever needs you have, I will be here to try and help you through your topics. Learning is also meant to be fun, so we recommend you do your lessons from start to finish. However, if you need to go back or learn sections again, that is absolutely fine. That is up to you. As long as you take notes, do the questions and listen as best you can, you will do well. This means, unlike private tuition, you only pay for one lesson and you play it as many times as you like. This is a very cost-effective tuition system. With a little bit each week, and maybe a little more in the holidays, you will be ready for your exams. Before long, you will be understanding lots more things to do with maths. So, as your teacher, I wish you lots of happy learning. Learning is about taking small steps. You don't have to be a genius overnight. Let me tell you how you can start learning. First, you go to the website called redzebralearning.com. Here you will see all sorts of topics that you can learn from. You have two choices. Either start at the beginning of the course right here or learn the lessons that you need more help in. It's up to you. Here is a sample of one of your lessons. This lesson will cover the following topics. Please remember that you can stop, start and replay any section at any time. You don't have to listen to the whole lesson in one go. Here are your topics. We recommend that you take notes and copy out what is shown on the screen. This will help your learning. You can stop and replay the lesson at any time to make your notes. What are indices? That is a good question. Indices are a useful way of simply expressing large numbers. Let's take a look at this example. Say we had a very long question like this. For example, 2 times 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 2. Instead, we can write it like this. 
2 to the power of 10. Where 2 is the number and effectively 10 is the number of times that 2 is being multiplied by. We call 2 the base and we call 10 the index. Let's take another example. How would we write 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? Well, first we take the base and in this case it is 3. And we count how many times that is being multiplied by. And in this case it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the index is 6. So we can now write 3 to the index of 6. Let's look at 3 times 3. You now know we can write this as 3 as the base and 2 as the index. And we write it like this, 3 to the index of 2. Let's also look at 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. You now know that we can write this as 3 as the base and 4 as the index. So we write it like this, 3 to the index of 4. So how would we write 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? You now know that we can write this as 3 as the base and 6 as the index. So written like this, 3 to the index of 6. However, let's look at the multiplication again and take the first four numbers of the multiplication. We know we can write the first four parts as 3 to the index of 4, just like this. So we put 3 here to the index of 4 here. Now, looking at the multiplication again, we take the last two numbers of the multiplication and we can write 3 to the index of 2, just like this. And now we have 3 to the index of 4 times by 3 to the index of 2. Now we know that we can also write multiplications with the same base number as 3 times 3 as 3 to the index of 2. And now we have 3 to the index of 4 times by 3 to the index of 2. And we know this expression equals 3 to the index of 6. So we have just shown that 3 to the index of 4 multiplied by 3 to the index of 2 equals 3 to the index of 6. This is really important. We have just shown that we add the indexes, also known as indices, when we times one by another. This only works when the base is the same. This is a very important point. Now let's look at this question. We know from our rules that we can multiply the indices together when we have the same base. And in this case we have the base T, but we also have the base S. We can't add these together, so we keep them apart. So we take one at a time. Let's take the base T first. So we put T here. And our rule is, if we have the same base, we add up the indices. We also had an another important rule, that if we couldn't see the index next to the base, we add a magic 1 next to it. So we put number 1 here. So we have 1 plus 1 equals 2. So we put our 2 here. Now we move on to our next base, S. So we put S here. 
And our rule is that if we have the same base, we add up the indices. Remember, we had an important rule that if we couldn't see the index next to the base, we add a magic one next to it. So we put number one here. So we have one plus one equals two. So we put our two here. But what do we do with the three and the two? Well, we simply times these numbers together. There is no trick. Therefore, three times two equals six. So our question equals 6t to the index 2, s to the index 2. Remember, we could break this question down. We could break our expression into three parts. We have numbers, we have base, and we have indices. The rule is we multiply the numbers. If the base is the same, we put the base next and then add up their indices. If we have different bases, we deal with these one at a time. We don't mix them together. It is now time for me to say goodbye, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Good luck with all your learning, and just to let you know, once you've watched your lessons, there are many exam type questions for you to practice each topic on. Bye for now, Red Zebra learners.